What's up guys, welcome back to the channel where we do learn and talk about photography until we're sick of it. And today I'm really excited because the gallery exhibit that I've been telling you about for months, I'm finally gonna show it to you. So uh, as I've said, uh, this was my first time putting an exhibit like this together. It was quite a process. I learned a lot. I don't wanna make this video as useful as possible for a photographer who may be considering taking a step like this in their landscape photography practice. So today I'm not only gonna show you around the photos in the exhibit, but I'm also going to walk you through the process that I've undertaken in the last four years to develop it. And I'm gonna tell you how I built the entire exhibit with a budget of zero dollars. Let's get into it. I suppose the starting point for this project is actually making the photos in the field. I advertise this as a, a four year uh, project, even though I really only started promoting and creating and printing it in January. And I really think I've only uh, conceived of these photos as a collection for the last couple years, but it's taken me four years to photograph the scene that is the subject uh, of the collection in lots of different weather conditions, lighting conditions, and seasonal conditions. So I call this collection The Little Woods on the Wabash, and it features um, lots of different photos from a local woodland preserve. And a couple years ago, I thought, well, this would be a great collection to show off in a gallery and, and could provide a lot of uh, community benefit by highlighting a, 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 a not particularly well-visited natural area. So fortunately, the process of making a lot of the photos has been documented in videos that I've made uh, for this YouTube channel. For example, this photo computation I made on the channel last June. While I'm cleaning up here, I'll also mention that uh, I am taking some bracket exposures here because the tree's so dark. So uh, hopefully once I've got uh, all the exposures, I'll have a, a good exposure for the uh, really detailed uh, part of this tree here. It's an old, uh, an old maple tree, I think, and, um, and, uh, and also some good uh, darker exposures to uh, really show the detail in those sun rays behind the tree. I what can be frustrating about that is not every flower species blooms every year. The flowers are really fragile. They, they easily blow away in storms, which are frequent in spring. And, and that being the case also, you don't always have the perfect weather conditions to get out and photograph a species when it is in bloom. So, right, so that's why I always say that your, your favorite photo subjects are, are years long projects, uh, not necessarily projects for a season or a week, you know, or a vacation stay. I set up my camera. I'm set up here with my 100 to uh, 400 millimeter lens and scan the scene through the viewfinder. How's it looking, man? This is looking pretty good. I thought we'll come down and we'll make this one picture together. And then one more here in the vertical orientation. In a whirl of excitement, I headed out to Wabash Trails Park, a 250 acre preserve a couple miles outside my hometown of Vincennes, Indiana. I've always had an affinity for the location. My dad actually helped build it as a teenager in the 1980s, and I thought it would be the perfect place to savor the woods' last breath of blooms. Oh, there's a deer. There's a deer. Before okay. I After I had all the photos collected, it was time to find a space to show it in. This is the uh, Northwest Territory Art Guild Gallery. It's like a local community art gallery. We have a few of these around town. Uh, you may have something like this in your hometown. If not, maybe it's a good idea to get involved and start one. So in January, the gallery offered me a space to show my to show my exhibit in June. And I expect that's probably because my photos were amazing and they, they demonstrated a great dedication to the craft and uh, outstanding uh, photographic excellence. But uh, I'll tell you the real secret to securing up that position, in my opinion, was this. I cleaned the gallery. <laughs> I cleaned the gallery, 
I change the light bulbs, I volunteer behind the desk, I try to get involved and, and sh you know, put my words into action that I'm dedicated to local arts and, and the cause of the gallery. So I'm always uh, helping coordinate, plan events, and in getting involved, pitching in, and making the, what the gallery does possible. And that, I think, was the trick to getting my show landed here in June. So after I secured that placement, it was time to start doing some budgeting, some planning, putting together some promotional materials to try to help fund the project because as I'm sure you're well aware, building a photography show like this is not cheap and I had no money, like literally zero dollars. So here's what I did. I measured out the wall space. I budgeted how much I thought it would cost to fill the wall space by building a spreadsheet and uh, doing some pricing on having prints made, on making my own prints, and of course, uh, taking into account framing and the commission that the gallery takes from the sales. And I tabulated that all up and I decided that I could do a really great show at a budget of about $3,000. If I could get $2,000, then I could do a pretty good show with uh, paper prints all in, in frames. And uh, you know, if I could at least get a minimum of $1,000, then I could put paper prints on the wall, maybe some in frames, maybe some just uh, spray mounted to foam or in some other uh, more inexpensive presentation option. And I put some promotional materials together, videos, emails, websites that sort of showcased my vision so that people who invested in it could see what their money was going towards. And I shot that around to um, local businesses who might want to have some advertising presence and, and maybe attach their branding to uh, outdoor activity, outdoor lifestyle, recreation, and, uh, and habitat preservation. Zero takers. Okay, having secured my placement in the gallery, this is where the process of creating the collection is actually gonna start for me. Right here in the kitchen, culling through the hundreds of photographs that I've taken of this location over the course of, as I've said, the last four years. So one thing that I'm trying to keep in mind as I produce this first set of images is that uh, as tempting as it is to do this with my uh, artist hat on, I think my immediate end goals would be better served to sort of have my marketing hat on. Uh, and that's because the end product of this first set is not like the ultimate gallery collection. It's to uh, generate, you know, slideshows of presentations, PDF files, emails, and those kinds of things that I will show to potential investors to try to get them interested in my project. I also considered, and I recommend that you do too, uh, looking into public funding. Uh, one great source of funding here in Indiana is through the Indiana Arts Commission, but your state, you know, whatever state you live in, probably has some source of state funding and you may have municipal funding for arts activities as well. But because I secured my placement in January and the show was in June, uh, I had just missed some of the filing deadlines to get public funding. So that option wasn't available to me. And that left me to my last recourse, which was reaching out to essentially you guys, people who follow my work, who, who might be interested in seeing a, a show like this come to life. I created a special print that was only available as a pre-order, as in it wouldn't be sold in the gallery. You could only get the print by pre-ordering it to help me fund the show. And that turned out to be not only a fairly successful promotional plan, but also the only successful promotional plan. Through that initiative, I was able to bring in $700 to seed the initial funding for the show. Not quite up to the $1,000 that I had hoped for, but uh, I scaled down my vision just a little bit and uh, I was able to, to bring the show to life, thanks entirely to your contributions. Okay, with my investment money in hand, you know what came next, printing, lots of printing. With the exception of one large metal print that was donated by an anonymous patron, and thank you to that patron, that huge metal print really set off the show. All the rest of the prints I printed in my home print studio on fine art papers. The printing took nine days. This whole uh, process took over my house for the better part of two weeks. The seven one of one prints that I offered, uh, I did have the budget to put into frames. And then the remaining 20 I printed in editions of five and those I had professionally dry adhesive mounted onto foam board. And as a last bit of preparation before, before we hung the show, I collaborated with a local potter named Victoria Kramer. You probably noticed that she's uh, ornamented and decorated all this pottery around the show. She does this really earthy work that I think complements uh, the natural flavors of my photos perfectly. Finally, 
Victoria and I had our opening night reception on June 3rd, and by any metric I can imagine, I would have to say it was a success. We had a good turnout, we got lots of good feedback. Of course, I learned a lot in this process, and even though my funding strategy didn't really require that I sell any prints, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, blank wall space here, so I did sell a lot of prints. So I've actually brought you along for the gallery's last glimpse of daylight. I'm here today to take the show down, get the gallery ready for next month's show. But the entire exhibit will remain on my website where you can see the full collection, including the prints that have already been sold and aren't here in the gallery to show you today. And place an order if you'd like at my website, mattramsey.gallery. There'll be a link for that down in the video description. Okay, that wraps up my first gallery exhibit, but the story's not over. Like I said, I'd like to make this video as transparent and helpful as possible. And next week I get my check from the gallery. So I'd like to tell you guys exactly how much money I made, how I think this project benefited me and, and can benefit me going forward, as well as to show off some of the, uh, the good that I was able to put the money that I'm making towards uh, in terms of what, what I've committed to uh, parks improvements so, and a little project that I've got in mind there. So I would encourage you to subscribe so that you can see this uh, story in its totality. And if you have any questions about the exhibit or uh, how the process went for me, uh, leave it in the comments and I'll try to address that in the next video. But until I see you next time, you guys uh, keep an eye out and a foot forward and thank you for watching.